Hey all your OS reviews, you're watching our hands-on review of the Jeet Air Plus. These are TWS wireless earbuds that sell for around 55 bucks, and the earbuds themselves can last up to 10 hours on a single charge, which is actually pretty long for the earbuds themselves, and then the battery case combined will get you around 35 hours when on the road, so it's a pretty small compact case. Now these do have Qualcomm's aptX. It also has a companion application which is kind of interesting that you can use to further change the properties of the sound such as bass. Now the packaging here is actually done really well. It says Air Plus and inside of this box there's actually a second box. So Qualcomm aptX, Air Plus, Bluetooth are all proudly stamped. And then we have the earbuds inside. Uh, it is a, a very portable battery case design we'll take a closer look at in a moment. Underneath here we have more detailed kind of instructions. Even the material for some of these boxes feels soft, almost like it's fabric. So a lot of attention to detail there. We have some spare silicon tips to get a more custom fit. And we also have a USB Type-C cable that you can use to charge up the battery case. Now if we take a closer look at the Air Plus itself, again it is extremely compact. Just as a quick size comparison, here it is next to the Apple AirPods. So you can see that indeed it is something very small and lightweight. Here it is next to the Redmi AirDots, another very small pair of TWS earbuds. So no problems at all in terms of fitting into a pocket. The body is constructed mainly out of polycarbonate plastic, which also makes it really lightweight. And then on the base, we have just the uh, USB Type-C port used for charging. These are IPX5 rated for the earbuds themselves, so you can take them to the gym. They're going to be rainproof and sweatproof. And then the very top of the battery case also has an interesting kind of prism-like pattern, uh, which kind of hints at what the earbuds themselves will look like. We can see that indeed the top of the earbuds also has that asymmetrical kind of prism-like pattern, which makes it look pretty sleek, similar to the top of the battery case door. So there is some subtle but interesting touches, and we can pop the earbuds out magnetically it snaps into place with a satisfying click and when it's in the case it will automatically begin charging it does have very quick top-up speeds where just a 15 minute charge can give you up to three hours of additional listening time and again up to 10 hours of listening for the earbuds themselves is extremely long now as a result it does mean that the earbuds themselves are a little bit thicker than normal since it has a larger battery inside of these so for comparison we have the redmi air dots which you can see are definitely smaller and uh, less thick but they're still not too heavy because they are still made out of polycarbonate plastic, which makes them fairly lightweight. What's interesting is that the body of the earbuds are constructed out of some rubber accents, including the rear here, which makes them fit a bit more snugly into your ears and doesn't really fall loose, even if you're jogging or shaking your head. It adds some extra resistance, which is good. There's even kind of a slight dip or micro wing design that tilts up that further supports them when you're wearing them. Turning over to the Jeep Play app, we can tap to add new earbuds. So with the earbuds still inside, we're going to tap on the pair button on the rear for a few seconds extra until we see it pop up under settings here. Um, so the pairing process is actually really similar to um, Apple AirPods. Afterwards, we have the earbuds here. We can tap on them. Uh, we are already connected, and things that we are able to do is take a look at the battery percentage on both the left and right sides. We can also change the different uh, controls for the taps. So for example, double tap right now on the left earbud will bring up the voice assistant, right earbud will do play and pause, but I'm able to reprogram all of these just by tapping on them to do something else, like play and pause, skip tracks instead, uh, depending on how many times you tap. There's even firmware updates that you can push over to the earbuds. You can change the musical style as well, kind of like an EQ or equalizer, uh, from classical, pure audio, live to DBB. And you can also access the user manual in electronic fashion. Moving into audio quality and performance, the most unusual thing about these is it's not using a touch-based sensor like the majority of other earbuds. So you can't use your flesh to basically to touch on it and expect it to work if you are exerting not any force at all. And the the reason why it's able to delineate between different types of tap intensities is because there is a accelerometer or motion sensor inside that physically detects motion or shake. Uh, so for example, if you leave it at a lighter setting, uh, you can trigger it not necessarily by pressing the top, but you can press anywhere. So if I just tap on it with my fingernails, um, you can actually see it now works and uh, brings up the Google Assistant. You can just tap anywhere, even from the top 
including the sides, and that will still work and bring up the assistant. So basically, the entire earbud is responsive to force and tap, uh, not any one particular edge or the surface. And it does seem to work actually pretty well. Uh, the cons is it still requires a bit more force, uh, even at the lightest setting, compared to a real touch sensor. The other slight con right now is you aren't able to customize the taps to do things like control the volume. That's one feature I would like to really see added to this list because you can control and customize it anyways. So being able to say raise the volume higher or lower would be a great addition to users that really value that functionality. So perhaps in a future software update, they can simply add that under the list and that would be really nice to see. Drivers themselves are well balanced and there's actually plenty of bass if you're listening to drum beats, especially if you go into the EQ settings and change it to the DBB or kind of the dynamic bass setting. And on this, you definitely hear a punch uh, as you're listening to EDM tracks and even acoustic tracks. It tends to emphasize the bass a little bit more. My personal favorite audio setting is actually pure audio or live audio. These both emphasizes the vocals a little bit more and makes kind of the singer's voice a bit more present and forward. Qualcomm's APTX does ensure fairly low latency, so you are able to play and pause the track, and the video and audio are synced together quite well. The only con would be it's not the most clean sounding earbuds in the world. So if you listen really closely, you can still hear a faint hiss or hum in the background sometimes. So a little bit of digital noise, it's not completely free from any distortion, which again, for the relatively inexpensive price is still fine. It's similar to other wireless earbuds, I'd say, but again, not the, necessarily the most cleanest in the world. Uh, so I still wouldn't really classify them as being hi-fi or audiophile grade, but nonetheless, it still is enjoyable enough. So overall, I would say that the uh, cheap Air Plus are, for the most part, pretty unique TWS wireless earbuds for an affordable price, which is hard to come across. The packaging and presentation is really delicate and well presented. We have that companion app, which is an interesting idea that not many competitors offer. We have really long battery life for the earbuds themselves, and also pretty solid audio quality and Qualcomm APTX. You can check out more details if interested in the links down below, but for now that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. That's been the Jeet Air Plus.